Hello, this is James from James Films, and today I wanted to show you how to make realistic looking grass in Blender. I'll walk you through actually creating the surface that we'll be scattering particles on, adding in the particles themselves, and then actually lighting and rendering the scene. Recently, I've become synonymous with making these kinds of abstract, surreal interior renders, where I sort of bring the outdoors indoors. This actually started as a project uh, that I began around the beginning of quarantine, where I really was missing hiking outdoors with a lot of my friends. So I wanted to kind of create the experience of hiking, but in a quarantined room in a small space that you're familiar with. So these are some of the results of some of my projects that I've worked on. And this actually spawned a much larger series that I've been continuing over on my Instagram page at James underscore films. You can check out there for a lot more of these kinds of renders if this suits uh, what you're interested in with uh, surreal nature renders. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Also, just excuse the audio quality. I just got a new microphone that will be coming in just a couple days, so I'll be using that for future tutorials, but hopefully this will suffice for now. Thanks for bearing with me. So let's just talk about grass in the wild first and just show you a couple examples of what it looks like here. So you can see there is not really, when you think of grass and I guess initially trying to draw a picture of grass, you usually will just draw blades of grass in the same color. But you can see in, in real images, there's so much variation in color and contrast and also just in length and size and distribution of grass in the scenes. So you have to really take this all in consideration when you're actually making a render and try to achieve this sort of randomness, uh, but controlled randomness with the grass. And I'll break down exactly what we're seeing in these images here. So first, let's talk about the lighting that you're seeing here. So lighting is essential for getting really realistic looking grass because the grass, it's kind of got this translucency to it almost in some cases where it can add some nice brightness or kind of glow like you see in this image on the right here to the scene. Or if it's getting blocked out by trees or other blades of grass or other things like lavender, for example, it can be shadowed and look darker. So there's all this contrast that you can really bake in really well with 3D programs like Blender. And the key to actually getting good lighting in Blender is to keep it simple to start out with. You can always add in some more lights uh, and point lights and, and sun lamps to add some extra contrast and lighting to the scene. But to be honest with you, for most of the renders I do, I just keep it very simple. And I use an HDRI and a sun lamp. And what these do are two different things. So for the HDRI, I think it's a great starting point to initially get some kind of lighting and, and color to your scene. Uh, if you're looking at these images from before, if I go back here, the skies in a scene are never one color. You know, a sky is never just perfectly blue. Or even if it's an overcast day, it's never perfectly white. There's always some kind of color variation in luminosity and also in saturation. So in HDRI, that kind of fills in the gaps and gives you a good starting point to kind of be splashing lots of different color and brightness on the grass surface. Well, I also add in a sun lamp to the scene, and this just takes the light a step further and specifically targets the lighting intensity. I think it adds in some really great shadows. You can kind of crank up the intensity of it a bit and really show where the directionality of your light is coming. You can do this to a certain extent with the HDRI, but I think to a certain point, if you keep trying to push the brightness on an HDRI, the image just becomes uh, too washed out and you're really losing a lot of that color variation that is essential and that what you're looking for uh, with the HDRI. And with the sun lamp, you can get really nice crisp shadows because of your ability to adjust the brightness. And I'll get into this in more detail as we actually begin the process. So let's also talk about the color of the grass too. This is largely influenced by the lighting conditions, obviously. But grass also takes many different shapes and it's highly influenced by the surface that it's actually growing on. So I've showed a couple examples here from what the images you're looking at before. And you can see there's this color variation in parts that are hit by light, it's nice and bright. There's also kind of soily parts in here, kind of more like mud or, or dirt. And then you've got these kind of deeper greens, which are maybe like moss or some kind of darker forms of grass. Similarly here, you kind of have some dead grass almost. And then scattered in between that, there's some maybe clovers or, or, or fresher grass that's there. And then in here, where this is really being splashed by the light, you see this brightness, you have almost this washed out, perfectly translucent grass. And then as we get further down here, there's some darker grass, which maybe doesn't get as much light because it's further down, and some also kind of brighter ones here too. And the actual color that you're seeing here, sure, it's also influenced largely by the lighting, 
but also it's very much influenced by the surface that's underneath it. So here you've got this forest floor, here you've got some kind of plains, and also some kind of grassland or meadow here. And I've shown some examples of uh, textures that are actually on a website from a, a great creator, Kai Moish. He makes some really nice textures that he releases uh, some versions of for free. And you can see in these textures, there's lots of variation. There's leaves and, and grass and rocks. And then there's also these kind of mossy surfaces. So whenever I'm creating a render of grass, I always start with the UV. I start with the surface that's underneath and then build up on that surface. It's really important to kind of have a nice base to understand the colors of your scene and trying to what kind of environment you're trying to create, whether it be a, a dry forest floor or a kind of mossy, wet uh, area. So let's also talk about the particles themselves. So this is obviously uh, the star of the scene here, so to speak. We've got a lot of different options to do this. And if you look up other tutorials on YouTube, they'll often show you exactly how to create grass from scratch, but these take a lot of time and it takes a lot of time even further to get the grass to look somewhat realistic and then you have to make other different variations of grass and clovers and whatnot so this just adds a lot of time and i think for beginners it can be very overwhelming and you can kind of feel like you're just swimming in place not really getting anywhere so what i'd recommend is to try to use some pre-made assets to save time and get to this really awesome quality very quickly so you can focus on what really matters which is creating the artwork if you like creating grass or, or photo scans, why not? By all means, go ahead and make it. But for this, for beginners, I really think it's a good starting point to actually just use some assets so you can get some experience modeling scenes, uh, lighting scenes, texturing, rendering, all the things that are important to the full 3D process and not just focusing on one little aspect of, of making these grass particles. So I'll talk about a couple different methods to do this, but specifically for this one, I'm gonna be using something called Groswald, which is uh, available to try for free. So you can actually get this and mess around with just a couple of their uh, systems. It's kind of a limited version that you can experiment with. I'll be using the full version for the sake of this tutorial. But I wanna keep in mind that I try to make my tutorials as free and accessible as possible for beginners because it's often a barrier of entry for a lot of people trying to get into 3D, uh, the cost of things. I mean, a lot of 3D software is really expensive and it's hard to just drop a thousand dollars if you're not sure you're going to like the software or if you're even uh, maybe cut out to, to take something on at such an advanced level and you really feel like you're not getting your money's worth. So that's why Blender is great because it's free. It, there's no barrier of entry. You can just download it and start experimenting and having a lot of fun with it. Uh, so for this one, we're going to be using a free texture from Kai Moish. I used one of these in a previous video, which was this sandy tutorial that I made. You can check that one out. Uh, that one's a lot of fun to do. It kind of touches on a different aspect of some of my surreal renders, which is displacements of really cool terrain. But we'll be pulling a kind of grassy moss looking texture, which I've linked in the description. As I mentioned, we'll be using Groswald, and then we'll be using a free HDRI from something called HDRI Skies, which is also linked in the description. So what we're actually going to be aiming for today is something that looks like this. I would touch on one of the renders that I do where I apply grass in a room and I kind of build an, out an architectural scene and, and do all kinds of stuff in the background. But for the sake of this tutorial, I really want to focus on the grass and show you how to make it look realistic. So we'll be getting something that looks sort of like uh, the left image here. And this is just a, a day and night version I did when I actually started first experimenting around uh, with a couple of these different scatter softwares in Blender. So if I back out of this and actually go into Blender, let's just start a new scene here. And I will also turn on the uh, screencast keys because I noticed that in previous videos I had forgotten to enable these. So this should hopefully be helpful for you uh, to actually see every one of my steps here. And I've made it nice and big uh, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So in Blender here, I think what's really helpful to do is actually open up an image as a reference to work off of. So you're not just working off of a blank slate here. So I want to show you how I organize uh, my Blender window here when I start all my scenes. So usually I like to go over to the right side here and click here and you can just drag this down and it makes a new window. If you click on here, you can make this an image editor and you can just import an image of your choice. So let me just pull in an image of a grassy scene, for example. So these are a bunch of skies that I've downloaded royalty free from Unsplash, but let's just take this forest sunrise image here and apply this into the scene. So what's great about this is you can 
hold your middle mouse middle mouse button down. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister. Middle mouse button down. You can hold that down, and you can pan around on the image. You can also scroll up and down with a scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And this will just allows you to kind of take in some of the details of the image as you're working as a good reference point. So I'm just going to leave that up there just kind of so I have a reference of the kind of color and lighting that I'm looking for with this. And I'm just going to select these, hit X, and just get rid of them for now. We're going to be using a mesh and a plane for this scene. You can tab into edit mode and just scale this up by, let's say, five to start out with. Now right click, hit subdivide. Right click again, subdivide once more, and then let's just make the number of cuts 50 here to start. This just gives you a bit of geometry to start with, so you can actually start displacing this terrain and adding in a bit of variation. So when we're looking at some of those examples, and, and this one's I think a great example here, you see this is definitely not a flat surface. There's no such thing as a perfectly flat surface in the wild here. Everything is going to have little bumps and lumps all throughout it divots and, and all kinds of different things in it. So we want to actually try to create that in 3D. And there's a couple different ways to do this. I will touch on this a lot more in a specific tutorial for displacements. But for this one, I'm going to be using two different methods. We're going to be using the sculpt tool to kind of get an idea of some of these hills that we add in. So I kind of want to add in this bump of a hill that we're going to be applying uh, to our scene. So there's a lot of different brushes to choose from. I like to use the inflate brush to quickly pull up the scene. And first, if you notice, it's got this kind of weird, you can kind of see it faintly there. There's this uh, blue thing kind of coasting around above where my, my cursor is. And that's because it's currently applying this as a symmetry. So if I go over to the tool for the sculpt brush, open up the symmetry menu, you can see it's mirroring across the X axis, whatever I do. So I'm just gonna take that off for a second. And with the sculpt brush, what you can actually do is hit F and don't click on anything, just move your, your mouse left and right, left to kind of decrease the size of this, right to increase the size of this, and then you can hit the left mouse again to commit your changes. And that just rescales so you don't have to touch anything else, you don't have to touch any of the sliders over here. You could also do it in the radius here, but I just find it easier to kind of quickly do this with your mouse. You can alter the size of that. You can also hit Shift and then F, which actually adjusts the fall off of your brush. And if you pull it all the way up here, there is no fall off whatsoever. Everything is the same exact strength. Or you could pull this down all the way down so there is just a little bit of touch in the center and some kind of fall off on the side. I'm good with the default fall off on it, so I'm just going to right click to uh, undo that change and, and not commit it. So if you're remembering that image I was showing as reference, it had a nice big hill in the middle. So let's just click, hold down, and just pull up that surface in the middle here. It doesn't have to be exactly like what I'm doing here. Have fun with it, mess around. You can use the middle mouse button to pan around uh, whatever you're doing here and just add in little bumps wherever you see fit. You can zoom in again, uh, add in like a little bit more detail to it if you want. So I kind of want this large hill here as a focal point. So I think that looks pretty good. So let's just go back to our object mode. And if I zoom in here, you'll notice you can kind of see all of these little squares here. These are the geometry. If you remember, we displaced the terrain, you can see it's got these, uh, all, all the little geometry here. So just to get rid of that, let's just shade it smooth and now it's a nice smooth surface. So while I'm here, let me just set up my camera so I've got an idea for what I'm working with. And what I'd like to do is actually pull out this tab here so I can use the right side of my screen as the camera's viewpoint. And if I click on the camera, I can go to item and let's just make it 90 degree rotation in 90 or X rotation 90 rather, and it's Z rotation also to 90. So we're going to be parallel with the surface. Let's shift it back over to zero on the Y axis. And if I hit zero on my numpad, it takes me into the camera view here. Instagram, if you're formatting for that, plays really well in 1200 by 1500 resolution. I found that works the best for a lot of my images. And if we just click on this camera, we can now hit G and then X to constrain our movement to just the X axis. And oops, I'm selecting different things. Let's hit G and then X just on the camera. And we can pull it along the X axis here. And let's just hit G and Z and then drag it down a bit on the Z axis. Let's move in a little bit more. And so you can see our hills a little bit flat. So let's actually add a little bit more to it uh, using the sculpt inflate brush. You'll notice in the camera view, the changes don't take effect immediately. It takes a second for you to, once you hit deselect on your mouse, and then the changes appear. And you can see there's like a kind of a weird crease in the geometry. So if I just hit shift, and I can smooth that out uh, with the same brush. So this is starting to look pretty good. 
I might add just a little bit more in here to balance my scene out. And if you kind of want to get an idea for the composition of your scene, which I find really helpful, if you're coming from photography especially, this is really helpful because this is what you often work with when you're looking down the viewport of your camera. If you click on this icon for the camera here, scroll all the way down to viewport display, composition guides, you can tick on the rule of thirds. And uh, I like to click on the center thing just so I get an idea for where the exact center of my geometry of my scene is. And there we go. That is what the scene looks like. If you are you don't want to see that and you just kind of want to see a render, you can go over to this top tab here and uncheck show overlays. Now we're just seeing uh, just what the scene will look like when it's rendered. So let's add a little bit more displacement to this because this is looking really smooth still. Uh, and like I said, the real world, as you can see over here, has all kinds of little bumps and stuff in it. So let's go to the modifiers tab, add a, another subdivision just to give us a little bit more geometry to work with. Uh, you don't really need too much here, so I'm just going to make the render and viewport both a level of one. Let's add a displacement modifier and hit new, and then click on these sliders here to take us into the texturing tab, and then let's apply a clouds to this. You can see that looks absolutely insane, so let's mess a little bit with the scale here and bring this up a little bit more so you can kind of see the lumpiness to our surface. I think a scale of two will work pretty well for this. I think the strength is a little bit too strong. So let's just pull this down to maybe something like a 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and that looks a bit better. So now if I look at this, you can actually see that there's some nice bumps uh, to the surface, and this will look really great once we start to scatter some grass particles on it. So we have our terrain. Now let's actually start with the texturing. And to do the texturing, what I like to do is just go into the viewport shading mode on the right side here, and let's just drag up this bottom menu here to do the shading uh, using the shader editor. If you don't already, go over to Edit Preferences Add-ons and type in Node Node Wrangler. This is a fantastic add-on and it's going to be immensely helpful as we do the texturing and lighting. If it's not enabled, just click on it and then go down here to the little three bars and hit Save Preferences. You will now have the option to do some really cool node wrangling. So I'm just going to click New Texture and let's just call this our grass uh, base texture here. So we have our principled BSDF node here, and what you can actually do is hit Control, Shift, and then T, and this allows you to do a uh, principled texture setup to your model. So let me go over to my assets, and I've saved that texture that I've linked in the description to my texturing tab, and let me just type in Kai. It is right here. And if you just left click and then select all of these and hit you now have the option to do a principled texture uh, setup, and Blender will do the work automatically to make a really great texture setup for you. So you can see it's already applied all the textures where they're supposed to be, which I think is really nifty. And it saves you the time of having to import all of these individually and clicking them all in one by one by one. It's kind of exhausting to do. So I think this actually already looks pretty good if I click out of the camera mode uh, and look around here for the scale. That scale looks decent to me. And you'll notice it's pretty low resolution. This is just a 1K texture, so it's pretty low res. But it does the purpose that we need it to do, which is just to give us some different colors on the base beneath our render. So I'm just going to go back to camera mode. I think that looks pretty good to me. And so if I zoom in here, you can see it's got all the textures here. If you did want to actually change the size of this a bit, if this does look too small or too large to you, you can just tab into edit mode. Let's just change this over to a UV editor. Hit select A to select all. And then let's just, you can scale it up or scale it down uh, to adjust what you're looking at. And if this is kind of a little bit laggy for you, running a bit slow, which it is a little bit for me here, uh, you can go over and actually just turn off the displacement and uh, the subdivision in your viewport just so it runs much quicker. So now you can see that's much faster. There's not as much lag to it. So I'll just zoom this out actually a little bit because that does look a little bit better zoomed out. And that looks pretty good. And then when you're done, to commit your changes, just hit tab. I'll actually just leave uh, the displacement and the subdivision off for now in the viewport because it's not essential that we see that uh, at the moment. So I don't really need this anymore, so I'm just going to slide this down just so you get a better view of the terrain. And one more thing I like to do actually with the camera is, as we're about to get into this next step, is to go once more down to the uh, composition guys, and you have this thing passepartout, and you can just turn this on to one opacity, and basically it just blocks out everything around, so you're just seeing uh, just in the middle here uh, what the camera's seeing, which I think kind of helps for composition as well. 
So let's go over to the lighting, which I like to do next. So first, let's bring in that HDRI. If you click on the World Scene tab here, click on this little yellow button here, Environment Texture, Open, and then I've saved the HDRI out. Uh, it's right here. Just bring that in. And oh, actually, one more thing. We do need the this tab for one more second. If we go back over to uh, from Object to World, you have our HDRI plugged into a texture setup here. And to actually change the rotation, to change uh, where the light's coming from, you can uh, click on just this one right here where the image texture is coming in, then hit Control and T, and it adds, uh, using the node editor, node wrangler, a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. And the main thing you're gonna to wanna to concern yourself with is just this Z rotation here. And you can spin this guy around to change where the light's coming from. So you can see that appears to be the largest, brightest light source in the image. And I want that to kind of be coming in at an angle so we're really hitting our grass uh, in a nice way. So let me just shift this off to the left here. And you can see we're kind of getting a nice glow on this left edge. Uh, I'm in EV here, so I'm just gonna turn on ambient occlusion and screen space reflection so we see a bit better what we're looking at. Let me crank up the strength a little bit here uh, so you can see a bit better what this looks like. And I'm also gonna just bring the rotation of this down just a bit so we're just seeing the sky here. Uh, there's another option that you can actually just completely get rid of this guy and add in another sky in post, but just for the sake of simplicity, let's just use this default sky from Blender. Feel free to mess around a lot more here if you want to add in some more adjustments to the scene and to make it a bit more exciting. Have fun, play around with this. You don't need to follow this tutorial exactly. That's part of the fun of artwork, right, is to add your own flair to it. So I think now is about time to actually add in the grass particles themselves. So let's left click on our terrain here, and I'm gonna open up the Groswald add-on here, which they've got some great instructions on their website on exactly how to install this. It's not too complex, but you just need to install it as an add-on uh, into your edit preferences add-ons tab uh, right here. So there's a couple different ways to set this up. I won't go into details, but I've got the Groswald Pro add-on and I have it enabled. It's really quick to set up and it adds in a great library of the, their plants. And keep in mind, I'm using the Pro version here, so this is not a free version, but there are certainly some tools you can still use with the free version to follow along with this. So if I left click on my terrain, and then I'm gonna click this plus button to create a new particle system. And basically what this has just done is create a, uh, a hair particle system, just a default hair particle system on our terrain. Now I'm gonna actually create new settings for this, and now you can see it's starting to do something here. It looks like it's getting closer actually adding in some grass particles. And the way Grasswald works is it has a species, so there's a variety of different grass and plant species that it comes with, and also some leaves and moss too. And it's got different variants of them as well too. So if I were to select, let's say, for my terrain, uh, let's just go with the creeping bent grass to start with here. This will take a second to load in because it is a pretty high resolution uh, object. Not too high resolution, but just takes a second to load in there. You can see there's a couple different variants to it. So I've got this kind of large one, a smaller one, just some fragments of it, and then some kind of flowered version. And I can actually scatter these in interesting ways across the surface. And you can see they're actually following the uh, rotation of our surface. So that's why it was really great that we actually went around and did some sculpting to make it look a little bit different because now it's going normal to that surface wherever it is. If I just keep that subdivision off for now and re-enable the displacement, you can see we have some of these divots now in here too, which are looking really great. So there aren't a lot of grass particles in here, so let's ramp up the density a little bit more to make it look a little bit more filled out. I'm thinking that this grass looks a little bit too tall, so I'm just gonna bring down the size just a little bit here to maybe 0.55. I think that looks pretty decent. But one thing I want you to keep in mind is when you're adding particles in, it's adding a lot more extra geometry to your scene that could very quickly overload your computer and slow things down to a grinding halt. So I think it's really important to keep optimization in mind when you're working on these renders. So for example here, we're only seeing the very front part of the scene, and we're not seeing all of this beautiful grass that's behind here. So it's useless to us, at least since we're doing a static animation, to have all that extra geometry. So there's a couple different ways you can actually get rid of that to optimize your scene. There's this optimization tab that's in here, built into Groswald, 
Now you can do something called camera culling, which I'll just enable here just to show you. It's taking my camera default as the active camera. And you can see it's just clipping all the grass that's not visible to the camera. So it actually has cut off a little bit of grass that's on the left and right edge of this camera. But you'll notice that this grass is still visible behind here because the camera doesn't know that that's actually blocked from its viewport. It still thinks that since this is in front of the camera, it's part of the scene and it's visible. So we actually want to get rid of that as well. So what we can actually do is go to distribution and show distribution properties. And you're going to want to add in a new paint layer. So if I click on this, and I can go in here. This is just doing some weight painting. Red is where particles are going to be at 100%. Blue is where there are going to be zero particles. And you can kind of go in between those. If I go to the tool here, you can see the weight adjust that red or blue. If it's one, you're painting everything uh, blue. Hold on, let me go down here. This is taking a little bit of lag here. Let's see here. There we go. So if you go to zero, it's painting everything blue, one, everything red. So I'm just gonna be uh, just painting in on the scene here. And I actually wanna go back to Graswald and hit recalculate density so I can do this live so you see it. If I hit right click, you can actually adjust the weight right from here, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna bring this down to zero and go around to behind here and let's just paint this out. And just get rid of this. This is gonna, get rid of a lot of those particles that are behind the scene and aren't doing us any good. I want to keep in mind that you're not deleting any particles in front. You can actually go uh, hit control and then three on the numpad to flip around to behind and we can just erase all these particles here that are doing us no good. So that looks pretty good if I go back into object mode you can see now all our particles are just in the front. We've given the grass a little bit of a haircut, which is quite nice. <laughs> so uh, there we go. So we have all our particles in the front and that's looking a lot more full out. But if we look at our, our reference here, there's no such thing as just one kind of grass formation here. So we're not just dealing with one kind of grass, unfortunately, in our scene. We've got lots of different kinds of grass here. And before I go any further, now that we have a grass actually to reference here, let's add in our other form of light, which is that sun lamp. I'm just going to hit G and Z to bring it up here just so I can see it a bit better. And just bring it over here just so I can see a bit better what I'm working with. And just for a second, I'm just going to disable this in the viewport just so I'm not loading down my screen. I can quickly rotate this. I'm going to hit R and then X to bring this up. And I can see there's some shadows starting to form on the right edge there. And I'm just going to turn this a little bit more and let's just crank the brightness up quite a bit on this light. Don't be shy with it. You can really uh, ramp up that brightness. Let's do something like 20. So now you can see we've got a really nice glow from that left edge. And I'm just gonna make the color ever so slightly yellowish, which I think adds this nice warm hue to the scene. Let's bring back in our grass particles here. And now you can see what we're working with. We've got this really nice kind of glow on the grass. We maybe don't need so many of these anymore since we've deleted some of the backs. So let's just uh, pull this down to maybe something like 35 because we're going to be scattering some other grass and leaves in between. What's really great about Graswald is you can actually edit the material of the grass in here and it's got a number of really great properties that go along with it. One being the age of the grass so I can make this a little bit more dried out if I wanted to do that or just have it really nice and fresh which I think looks a little bit too cartoony. It doesn't really look as photorealistic so somewhere kind of in between 5 and 0.5 and 0.8 I think looks pretty good. You can also adjust the percentage of that uh, to the extent of which it's affecting the grass. And then you can also adjust the translucency. Uh, so you can make it completely uh, opaque to lightness, light coming through it, so it's nice and dark. Or you can just have it completely absorb that light, which adds this really crazy glow to it, uh, which I think looks nice to a certain extent, maybe a little bit too intense. Let's do something kind of in the middle here. You can also affect the wetness, which kind of makes it look a little bit more like dew in the early morning. So I always like to turn that up a little bit. You kind of have this nice little bit of, of glow, extra little glow in certain patches of the grass, which looks really nice. You can also affect the dead patches and uh, dryness of the grass. So let's just add in a little bit of that just to break up some of the variation a bit more. And let me just quickly click on this button here and hit auto name all systems. And this will just actually apply the name of this grass to it so you know which, which blade of grass we're working with because we're going to be adding in a couple more to this scene. So let's just hit the plus once more to create a new system, 
create new settings. And for this one right off the bat, I actually wanna go down to this density, hit this drop down, and then use this untitled density. I should have given it a name. Let's just name it frontward density or something like that. And then uh, if I go, oops, just get rid of that for a second. If I click on that and re-enable that, you can see um, once I add in a particle system to this, let's add in some, let's add in some dandelions to this. So let me just change this version to this type of guy here. And now it is still affecting the back of this here, so I should have somehow changed this. There we go. Recalculate density. Untitled density, that's the one. Yeah, okay, so untitled density, there we go. And it's only currently scattering one, so let's increase that density up quite a bit. Add in some more of these dandelions. Now you can see they are starting to appear, looking pretty nice on our surface. We can scale these up maybe just a little bit more. And I like to add in a bit of randomness to their size. So now we have some nice dandelions kind of poking out of our scene. So also if I look at this image over here as a reference, there's sometimes grass or moss or leaves underneath the grass here. So let me just auto name this. And let's add in some leaves underneath here to create this scene. We can pick any one of these. I'm just gonna pick the, let's see, the maple leaf, the various leaves, it looks pretty good usually. And what I'm going to do for right now, now you can see my scene is starting to get a little bit overloaded, is to turn off these ones. So I'm just seeing the leaves underneath. I can scatter these a lot more. The size is a bit extreme, so let's pull that down. That looks pretty decent. And I'm going to add in that untitled density 01 to it as well. So now it's, oops, it's this guy. Always name your systems. I did a bad job naming that one, but always name your systems so you know which one is which. So now that is only appearing on the front edge, which looks really nice. And if I add in that grass on top of it, you see it looks pretty nice underneath it. You can throw those dandelions back in on top and let's maybe just increase the density of this grass just a little bit more again, because it is looking a little bit patchy. So that's looking pretty decent to me. And let's just add in one, let's auto name that. Let's just add in one more system here and then we can call it a day and actually render this out. I'm gonna turn these off for a second just while I'm working with this so I see what I'm doing here. Create new settings and let's add in, hmm. I think this looks pretty cool, these curly dock things, which I kind of like. Let's add in that untitled density, calculate density, and let's just scatter a whole bunch of these across our surface. Let's rescale these up a little bit. So that looks pretty nice. Let's rename it. And let's add in all our systems back in again. So that's looking pretty cool. You know, we've got our, our grass, it looks pretty realistic. And keep in mind, this is just an EV, which already looks pretty great. And if you're gonna render an EV, also remember with Groswald uh, to enable in your light options, contact shadows, it's just gonna look a lot nicer, a lot crisper. For this one, I actually wanna render it though in cycles. So I'm gonna just click on this render region option here. And we're gonna go over to cycles. This will take a second to load in because there's quite a few particles. So while this is loading in, I'll take a time, I'll take a second to plug my other YouTube videos. Uh, I make a lot of tutorials. I've been trying to make a lot more recently. And if you ever have any suggestions for tutorials, be sure to leave them in the comments. I've also started a Patreon recently. I'm just starting to build up the content on there a lot more. So be sure to check that out. That is linked in the description. I just released a tutorial kind of comparing all the different types of scatter methods for grass in a lot more detail than just this video. Um, so check that out. So this is just about loaded up in here and you can see it's looking pretty cool already. So we can probably just render this out if, you, if you'd like to do that. And let me just talk a bit about some of the render settings here. So if you're running with CPU, you can usually just go with default. I like to put the render samples up to something like 400 or 500. I think that looks pretty decent if it's a very well lit scene. If it's a bit darker lit and you have things like glass, you would always wanna put your render up a little bit higher so you have more samples to kill some of that noise. But I think this already looks pretty nice. And so I can just click this out and render if I want. I'm actually gonna switch over to GPU, however, and go down to this performance tab. And to actually get this open, uh, be able to adjust this, you can hit auto and then auto tile size. And you wanna enable this because this allows you to change the tiling of your render. So that's basically the, the little boxes that appear up when you're rendering in cycles. You can increase or decrease the tile size. If you hit on this little cog here, it opens up. So you can make it 32 by 32, 
which would be the dimensions for the tile rendering. But for GPU, I usually like to use something like 256 by 256 or 512, so you're only gonna have nine total tiles. I feel like that's just faster. There's a, a Blender Guru video I saw, like I think a couple months back, where he made a really great description kind of breaking down all these different styles, um, or all these different render settings and ways to optimize things, and that was what was optimized for GPU, was a larger tile size. So if you're rendering on GPU, I'm just gonna go with something like that. And if we remember from that reference image that I showed over here, I added in a little chair to the scene. So if you wanted to do something like that, that chair actually comes for free in Blender. It's in an add-on that's called Blender Kit, which I don't currently have enabled, but you can enable it if you want. It'll take a second to load in here because there's a lot of data that comes with it. Uh, so now it says, welcome to Blender Kit. Blender Kit connects from Blender to an online community, built shared library of models, materials, and brushes. So a lot of cool free stuff comes with it and it just appears over here in your menu. So if I were to go down to Blender Kit and then hit Models, you can search by free only which you, of, of, if, if you want, which I think looks nice. Uh, there's a lot of already great free ones to choose from. And you can just search for a model. So if I just search for chair, for example, it's gonna take a second to load and we've got a couple different options here to choose from. There's like one chair in particular that I really like using, which is the one I, I showed in that example. And it's super simple to just import it into your scene. If you just scroll through here, you can look at all the models. There's the chair by Hans Wagner. If I just left click on that, it'll take a second and it will load into my scene. It is currently hidden beneath, uh, I believe, hidden beneath my scene somewhere. So let me just pull this guy up. Let me just switch out of rendered mode for a second here because it's gonna be really slow. Oh, and you can see another great feature of Groswald. It is using the something called a proxy system here, which is using these LODs to speed up your viewport so you're not seeing all those individual particles of grass. Instead, it's got these proxy shapes, like large cubes or weird little geometric shapes here to take the place of those particles uh, to really optimize your scene and make it go much faster. Oh, there's our chair. He's hidden over in the corner. So let's just hit G, Shift Z to bring it over, shift it up. And let's scale this bad boy up a little bit more. Hit R, Shift Z to rotate. And let's bring it down onto our hill. And to actually get this exactly on the hill, let me just disable the particles in my viewport for a second here so I can see actually where our surface is. You can see currently our chair is levitating midair, which is not very realistic if you ask me. So let's bring that down a bit here. And we can kind of rotate this maybe a bit so it's kind of facing more towards the camera. And it looks decent there. If you kind of want to get the composition going a bit better, you can once again re-enable the uh, overlays. So you can see I can center this up nicely in my screen. And that looks pretty good to me. So let me just re-enable all these systems here and we can go back over to cycles mode. And you can just render this out right here if you are so inclined, but you can see this looks really nice. You've got a really nice scene very quickly with some realistic looking grass. So there we go, this will take a second to load. If you wanna render this out, I think this will look really great. You've got a nice variation to the grass. Once again, you're optimizing your scenes, so you're not putting a lot of grass in the background here. So you can really well allocate your resources and it looks pretty cool. It's got this kind of nice surreal vibe to it. Maybe this is a nice meditation spot. Maybe this is a place where I go to think about tutorial ideas, who knows? <laughs> um, just have a lot of fun with this, really experiment and just see what all kinds of different landscapes that you can create. But always keep in mind the optimization of your scene. You can very quickly run yourself out of memory if you're just importing a ton of particles into your scene. So always think back to that as you're rendering. That's my biggest tip for keeping your scenes optimized. But this looks really, really cool. And so I think I'm happy with this one. So I would just hit F12 to start the render on this. This will take a little bit of time to cook, so I will not have you guys sit through this. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful for you. You can see those tiles importing in and stuff is rendering up. It's gonna estimate about 10 minutes on this render. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was a helpful tutorial for you. This is one I get asked quite a bit about how to do. So I really want to break down on a pretty simple level for a beginner exactly how to do this kind of work in Blender. You can really do quite a lot with just a few little clicks um, to make some really cool products and just have a lot of fun with it. 
So once again, if you have any other tutorial ideas, leave them in the comments. Let me know how I did with this one. And once again, I'll be having an awesome microphone in just a couple days. So this audio quality will sound much, much better. But thanks so much for dropping by. Subscribe for more and check me out on Instagram at James underscore films. I'll catch you in the next one. 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 One.